Hello everyone, it is Ben Carpenter from Grassroot Communities. So, we're doing a podcast where we're filming today. Is it actually called a podcast? A what? Vodcast. Vodcast. Okay, we're doing one of them. What we're talking about today is the Grassroot Activators Program, GAP for short. You probably would have heard a podcast about it if you're into this kind of stuff. And I'm going to explain a bit more today. Because this program starts in September 2022. So there's not much of a turnaround. We've just found out we've got most of the funding to get it started. Um, and there's about a month and a half left until it happens. So we are looking to recruit 15 young people from more challenging communities across the city that's 16 to 25 years old. If people are listening to this and thinking, what's challenging? I mean, I could have said marginalised. Another rubbish word. You know what I mean. You could be living in whatever community and still have all the love around you, mum, dad, living in, in your house and, you know, both of them are working, but you're living in a more challenging community. We all know where they are. Um, and the whole reason for this programme is to support you to create a pathway to future opportunities based on your passions, okay? It's creating the connections that will make these things happen. Now, at the moment, I'm just firing out even more words and you're probably like, oh, what's he all about? I'll explain. I'll put a bit more detail into it. Hopefully, I'll paint a picture. You'll be able to understand and there'll be millions of you trying to enroll in it. Um, but we just need 15, so 15 will be fine. All this stuff, right, this program has been based on um, consultation, basically chatting with young people and adults over the last four years. Grassroot communities, not just me, other people, deliver loads of different projects in schools, in communities, in community buildings that are all based on the wants and needs of young people. So we always start from a point of discussion, find out what the interests are, but we have to build a relationship first. It's not like meeting a group on a corner of Morrison's or something, saying, what do you like? They say, football, we go, great, and then we start a football club. Once you build the relationship, and you build that um, relationship in more depth, you'll then start getting the real answers of what the wants and the needs and the passions are. Anyhow, so that way of working has ended up developing lots of different projects that we've uh, delivered over time. And a lot of that has ended up forming and shaping what is the Grassroot Activators program. So this program is two days a week. So if you're signing on, you're claiming a housing benefit, you're working part-time, you're doing a college course, you can still do the Grassroot Activators Programme. And why would you do it? Like I was saying before, the hope is that we create, help you create a pathway to an opportunity that's based on your passion by the end of it. Alongside that, you're, always, you're going to be developing yourself You'll be learning transferable skills to life. You'll be problem solving, which will help in any profession. It's going to support your communication, team building, confidence, all those things that any employer is looking for. And you're going to have added support to make sure those passions come into, you know, come to life at the end of the course. You'll see what I mean now. So within that first college term, there's youth work, six sessions. There's community development, six sessions. There's leadership, six sessions. Once you've learned all those things, you're going to then, in term two, put it into action. You would have already consulted and discussed with local people of all ages what are their wants, needs, problems and passions. You would have learned the tools to go out and get that information from local people. And then you're going to deliver something that positively impacts on your community. The ripple effect of that is huge. Normally we do it individually with a small group in a community. You lot, the 15 that do this, are going to be broken into smaller groups. Suddenly it's going to amplify the impact across the city, where it matters as well and where it's needed. Term three, you're going to be doing a work placement. As I said, the work placement is based on your passion. When you do your application form, it is the easiest thing you've ever done. Literally, one page of A4, a profile on you. Then there's a little bit about why you want to make a difference in your community 
or in the, on the planet. Then there's a line, what's your passion? So you're going to have a work placement that is based on your passion. That's one day a week for term three. I'll explain how that's going to be developed a bit later on. You're also going to do a module on entrepreneurship, which is basically learning the nuts and bolts of how to set up a social enterprise or a business, that kind of thing. Term four, <coughs> again, you put it into action. So you'll have a small budget within your group. You would have done a consultation in the different areas that the young people live in, and then you'll choose one and you'll go and deliver a social enterprise. Same, next lot of learning. Term five, this stuff's all based around nature connection. And why nature connection? You might be thinking, well, hang on, that's a bit of a blimmin' jump in it. Not at all. This whole thing's about people, place, i.e. where you come from, and planet. And this has all come through the consultation. So young people that we were supporting through lockdown, for example, there are many. A lot of people have been struggling with mental health. That's young and old, we all know that. Um, and it doesn't matter what background you're from, it can impact on anyone. One of the things that is noticeable when um, I tried supporting and you know, helping some young people that um, we've engaged is when you talk about nature as something that might support your mental health and well-being if you're triggered, the thing normally comes back. What's nature? Like, well, I mean, I know what nature is, but like, what, what do you do? What do you practically do? Good point. Do you know what I mean? It's just words, isn't it? It's, good. it's just words. So instead of going on a bit more about that, I'll explain what it is. Some of the things that we can do and why we do it. So the first module in Term 5 is called Nature Connection. It's basically bushcraft. You do things like den building, fire lighting, uh, willow weaving foraging baskets, foraging for wild food, outdoor cooking, spoon carving. The list goes on. There only be five sessions, but we we work out which one fits best <laughs> at the time. We've done it all before, and this is the point: we have done it all before with young people. We've done it before with um, children and dads, children and mums. The impact is huge. Once they've learnt those skills, practical, creative skills, they go off and they have to survive in the wild with nothing else but those skills. We are talking hardcore. No, I don't want to scare anyone because it's all going to be, it's done properly and we've done it before. There's going to be someone else that's going to be um, delivering that part of the, the programme as well. Um, and more to the point, you'll love it. When people fall in love with nature, they're more likely to look after it. Um, and not only that, I just think it, it's, it breaks things down. When you spend time out in nature, once you feel the impact on you, you don't have to listen to people like me rattling on about what, how it impacts on you what difference it makes because you feel it and that has got to be and that really runs through the whole program it's about feeling those things and, and experiencing them so the other modules in um, term five you've got community growing and you've got cooking that's all one module community growing and cooking and that's fairly self-explanatory learning about food learning about how to grow it learning about little techniques and ways to do it learning about how to cook all transferable skills for life healthy food good for your body good for the planet cheaper do you know what I mean it's, it's things that I mean I wish I knew it when I was younger but anyway this is going to be part of it then there's the well-being module which is things like um, mental health session there's drugs and alcohol awareness session healthy relationships session um, physical activity session which is going to be pretty crazy but I'm not going to tell you about it now um, there's something called spiritualize which you might be thinking what is he on about um, I mentioned this actually on the podcast. I'm not going to tell you any more about it now. It's got nothing to do with God, by the way. It's all to do with things that positively impact on your well-being. It's going to be amazing. And then what happens in the, the term six? Term six is then you put all those skills that you've learned, term five, into action. Based on the consultation and discussion with your communities, you then deliver an environmental action project. You can now see the flow of it. Learning, put into action. Learning, put into action. Learning, put into action. At the end of the program, what are we hoping for? As I said at the beginning, I'll say again at the end, it's fairly straightforward. We are supporting you to learn lots of different experiential skills, gaining experiences and making connections with other, other people that will support 
creating a pathway to you at the end of this course, finding an opportunity based on your passion, what you want to do, not like, ah, oh, I've got to do this because I didn't get any GCSEs or, ah, oh, I've got to do that. Cut that. This is exactly what's happening. We support you to find your passion. Now, what I didn't mention to you is that you will have a youth work mentor or a voluntary sector men mentor even, which is anything from a um, community development worker or, or a youth worker, someone around the, those kind of professions that will mentor you once every three weeks. That'll be on a Wednesday. The, the project, by the way, is on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. You'll get a mentor from two till four, right? The first week is the voluntary sector mentor. They support you holistically within the program to make sure that you know, you're all right and if things are going on, you've got someone to talk to. As well as that, you've got someone that understands that sector and that world. So they can connect you with other organisations when you do the social action or the social enterprise that you might be able to do stuff in collaboration with. Again, that builds your connections, your networks of people, which helps with employment. As well as that, you'll have on the second week of the, um, the mentoring, you don't actually have a mentor. That week is specifically for you to learn from others within the young people that are in the, the group. You can basically write up all the stuff that you're learning because this is a toolkit, this stuff that you learn that could help you later on down the line. As well as that, that would be time for you to go and consult and talk to your community. You'll learn all the skills on the programme to do it, then you actually go and speak to people and find out what it is that they want, need. The third week is a business mentor. Now, the business mentor is, again, going to build a relationship with you, but specifically, they are there to kick down doors so you find a placement based on your passion. So remember I said term three? You'll find a placement based on your passion, but as well as that, by the end of the programme, they're supporting you to be able to connect with the right people, maybe kick down a few doors if, if need be to talk to the right people to create an opportunity that is based on your passion, which could be an employment, which could be an education, which could be volunteering, or it could be an apprenticeship. What's not to like? It sounds pretty good to me. I wish this was flipping going when I was whatever, between um, 16 and 25. We'll have a celebration event at the end of the programme, which young people will be um, putting together, coordinating. Um, the big thing with that as well, we're going to have um, people that have been involved in the project. So it's not just me delivering it. There's other people delivering aspects of the programme to keep it fresh and interesting. They're specialists in what they do. Um, they'll be there. There'll be people from the community that have been positively impacted. There'll be family members that have been invited. There'll be the mentors that have been invited. There's people from business that will be invited that may be able to offer other opportunities. And then what's going to happen on that celebration evening? What would have happened is we would have had a, um, a show reel that would have been developed throughout the year where different people would be um, interviewed, all based on that one young person's journey from the beginning to the end, different bits of action that were going on in the communities Will be, um, will be filmed and there'll be a show reel for each individual young person showing their distance travel. That amount of richness for me will tell the story long term of what's actually happened throughout the year and the absolute gold that that young person has achieved. Um, the programme is accredited as well so it's got an ASDAN um, a custom, a customised accreditation and the reason why it's gone that way is because it's you try and put these kind of things within mainstream education and it's difficult. You have to bend it so far out of shape to hit the funding needs that people will talk about that it ends up becoming something that people didn't want. So thankfully, ASDAN can, um, can kind of um, shape their accreditation around what we're delivering. And that's it. What is not to like? It's starting soon, very soon, September. Um, we've got two sessions at the beginning of the, the programme where we're going off and we're building relationships. Um, we'll be going to the Wave, we'll be going off and we'll be doing an away day up at um, Barton Camp. It, it, this is going to take a big level of commitment, let's not pretend. like It's quite long, isn't it? Two days a week for a year. There's loads of learning involved in it. 
but anyone could do it. Really, anyone could do it. Everything is experiential learning. We, we'd hope that we could have anyone from any background come to do this project. And the real beauty of this is, it's for young people from across the city. So when you start blending someone, I'm just saying names now, a young person from Nor West, a young person from um, St. Paul's, a young person from Southmead, and they're coming together in their small group to deliver a social action project, then you're really celebrating the differences, but more importantly, the things that are similar between people from across the city. And that doesn't just impact on the young person, that will impact on the wider city. And hopefully, we can, uh, we can fund this year on year. There's been seven or eight so far amazing businesses that have sponsored a young person, and we've then got little bits of funding to make up the other bits. We still need a bit more. And hopefully we can do this year on year. And by doing that, we're creating those opportunities of people that would be in positions from marginalised backgrounds that hopefully one day will be employing other people and understanding what it's like to walk in the same shoes as people from marginalised backgrounds is huge to be able to, um, to employ them later on down the line so hopefully you've listened to this and you're looking forward to it I am, get in touch we'll put the information and contact details on this post um, yeah, let's do it <laughs>